So, hello everybody. Great little case today. I am always mithered by uh, the subscribers of this channel to do more of a restorative uh, a root canal case and this is this is a nice little case sort of demonstrating uh, this uh, this sort of case and um, today we're gonna um, obviously we're gonna assess the tooth and um, and then eventually we, we, we place us a fine post in this case so what I want to do is I want to go through the steps um, through my kind of initial diagnosis and my assessment of if the tooth is restorable or not We'll do the root canal, a few little challenges along the way, and then I'll show you how I personally place a, a fiber post and then and then place a core on top. So if we look at the x-ray here, we're, we're specifically looking at the lower left five, okay? I know that there's a, a lot going on with this, with this, with this patient. And in fact, um, there is a bit of a question mark over the lower left four. And when we remove the filling, we put a new filling on top. It was found that this tooth was fine. And we, I feel like the sort of apical inflammation um, that looks like is associated with this lower left four is actually um, due to the lower left five. I think it's kind of like the sort of the sort of 2D image has sort of overlapped uh, this tooth. So um, the patient's been made aware, but I'm happy the lower left four is fine. You know, we look at the, the lower left five and it is in a very, very, very poor state. So again, if we look at the x-ray, um, you know, you can see that um, on the x-ray, you can kind of see where the gum line is a little bit. I mean, it's not, you know, it's, it's not perfect. It's looking inside the mouth, but you can see that this tooth is at um, the gum line. Okay, so if, um, and nobody is aware of uh, the ferrule effect. Essentially, what we're after is, especially on uh, sort of posterior teeth, you know, two to four millimeters above the gum line for us to uh, uh, have enough um, tooth tissue to put a crown on. I believe four millimeters is ideal, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy with two if the occlusion is correct and the patient's being consented. So um, when we uh, pop the rubber dam on, I have to use these kind of um, pinching rubber dam clamps that sort of pinch inwards to try and get over this tooth. And I and I think it's it's overall it's it's it is restorable. And this tooth is so badly broken down that there's no access required. So uh, we go straight for this size 10K file. And what I'm trying to do here is I'm just using a sort of watch winding technique and I just can't get to, to the end of the tooth. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use this sort of stepwise approach, okay? I'm going to use the rubber stopper on the size 10K file to see how far I've got. And then it can see here that I'm about 14 millimeters. That's the furthest that I've reached. And then I'm gonna get a higher diameter file and I'm gonna shape it to about 14, 13 millimeters. Ideally it should be 13, but in this case I've done it to 14. And I am going to shape the canal space that has been negotiated. So once I've used a high diameter rotary file, I am then gonna use an even larger uh, diameter rotary file. In this case, I've gone from a 10 to 15 now to a 20, and that's gonna be around one millimeters away from the zero reading. So it's gonna be about 13. And this is gonna really, really open up uh, the canal space. So um, usually if you can't get to length, it's usually the canal is being, uh, is gripping the file further up its shank. Okay, so if you open this up, usually what happens is that you can get to, uh, to, to length pretty easy. So um, what I'm gonna use now is, uh, I'm gonna use a, a, a smaller diameter file. This is smaller than the size 10, and this is also a D-finder. So we were talking about uh, the canal space gripping the file further up the, the, the shank. With the size 10 K files, or with K files, it, there's like a sharp kind of cutting um, uh, face that ro that rolls all the way up the the the, the shank of this uh, file. With these D finders, the whole length of the file is essentially just a smooth uh, board uh, cylinder with a channel cut out of it. And this is what these uh, D finders do. They just get to length. Um, but in the first instance, I measure it at 14, so I know if I'm getting a little bit uh, further or not, and I just can't get quite get to the end. So another little trick, if you can't quite get to uh, the end on, of the tooth, is make a very, very, very small bend at the end. So we're about two flutes away from the end of, uh, of, of, of the file here. And then when I introduce this size eight 
uh, defined it into the canal. I am just very slowly, 365 degree motion, just trying to feel for that kind of catch. And then the, 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 the second best feeling in dentistry is where you just drop into uh, the, 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 the apical constriction. Uh, the, the first best feeling, by the way, is removing a file. And you can see it just drops in and it's absolutely gorgeous. Worst thing for you to do now is to pull it out. I'm just gonna pop the apex locator on and just check that we are at the zero reading and we are. And then what I wanna do is I want slow in and out movements just to open up that kind of um, that difficult kind of pathway towards the end of the uh, end of the tooth. So small, small in and in and out movements. You obviously need to be careful about blocking. You also want to be careful that you don't push it too far in and out, or you'll just slip straight out. And it's just just lots and lots of patience. Don't be too in a rush to 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 pull this file out. We're going to then use a high diameter file. This is now a size ten with a little bend at the end. And we're going to introduce this into canal and i kind of know where the bend is because i'm using the uh, sort of the marker on the on the rubber stopper on the on the last uh, file and i'm just going to very gently introduce it get it in check the working length check we're going to zero and then again and um, we're going to be in and out in and out in and out and just shape it out and we found that the the working length is at 15 millimeters and that's quite short okay but we know it's short because um, because because there's no crown. Okay, so if the crown was on this, then this would be about 21. And then we're gonna use this uh, size 15 glider file, this size 15 high flex glider, glider file to uh, the zero reading. And I know there's a kind of slash ledge slash kind of sort of awkward portal of exit here. So I'm just gonna use T mode on my motor. So this is kind of a 90 degree uh, back and two sort of uh, watch winding motion. Um, just to reach the end. And now um, I've got another brilliant tip here. So um, not all stoppers that you find on, on files are created equal. So if we look at the two stoppers here, we've got the one on the left. This is a stopper from the high flex range. This is on the 25 variable. And you'll notice the sort of circle on the inside is quite wide. And then the stopper on the right, this is from a D-Finder, it should be triangle, but actually if you notice, I've just snipped off one of the um, one of the little apexes of the, the triangle. And this is because when I made a little bend with the D-Finder, so this, this stopper's from the D-Finder, um, I know where the bend orientation is. And you'll notice here that the hole in the middle of this is imperceptible, okay. So this is, kind of significant because when you use uh, your uh, rotary files uh, at a very very short length the very very large hole in between the stopper doesn't hold onto the file very well and it can move a lot and obviously this is significant when you try and do working length uh, shaping but if we use the rubber stopper here where it's got a, quite a tight hole the, the 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 stopper stays in place so what i've got a um got a habit of doing is replacing stoppers okay so if i'm using say this high flex 25 variable here and it's really really short i'm going to just replace the stopper and i'm going to just shape it nicely all the way to length or 0.5 millimeters from the zero reading and um it's really, really important to recapitulate um, a, a tooth, especially when there's like a little bit of a ledge or there's like a sort of acute angle where the portal of exit uh, occurs. And then there's lots and lots of debris found on this, uh, this, this, this row tooth file. So I'm just gonna use this sponge here just to remove the debris. We're ready for the cone fit radiograph. I am obviously going to use uh, the matched cone and we have a look at the cone fit radiograph. And although short of the working length, I am happy that this is at the working length. Again, ad nauseum, look at lots of my videos. You will know that the radiographic apex and the anatomical apex are not necessarily the same thing. And then I'm gonna use our final irrigation protocol. I'm gonna remove the GP here and we're gonna use sodium hypochlorite. Uh, 2%. I use 2% because I use lots and lots of it. I don't like using higher concentration sodium hypochlorite. And then we're going to use 17% EDTA activated and then back in with the sodium hypochlorite and then reactivated. And then we're ready to dry the canals. And again, I'm using these uh, Wave 1 Gold um, 
matched paper points. And then what wasn't obvious before is when I pulled this GP point, I like to disinfect them. I've got this style Italiano um, GP uh, disinfecting wheel and I've just put it in the MB1 because it was just easy. And um, it's really, really important that you disinfect your GP points because if you imagine the GP points are just in the box, they're not sterile and you've spent all that time trying to clean the canal and then you, you know, there's a possibility of putting uh, dirty GP points in the canal space. And I'm ready to optrate with this bioceramic. I'm gonna make sure I fill it up nicely all the way. And then I'm gonna very, very, very slowly place the GP point to length. And I'm gonna be really, really careful here because I know the canal space is very, very narrow. And if I just jam this GP point right to length very, very quickly, we're gonna either get the GP points not gonna push the length because of uh, vapor lock. So there'll be some um, uh, sealer which is getting stuck and you, it won't be able to push out. And also you get um, a, a lot of extrusion. And then we're gonna use a heater plugger just to remove the excess. And then um, we're gonna use a Mach 2 plugger then just to condense things down. And I do like to really, really condense things down. I like to push things to length, make sure everything's all nice and tidy. But in this case, it's not a major issue if it's tidy or not because we are gonna do an immediate post placement. Some people like to uh, obturate and then put the post in next time because sometimes it's difficult to um, to place a post once the obturation is still, shall we say, wet. But in this case, you know, I've got the uh, the, the rubber dam on. I have got uh, the, the root canal all done nicely and I know the orientation of the canal so I'm ready to um, put the post in straight away. And I'm using para post here. And the most important thing is use the smallest diameter post that you can get down there because um, you don't want to remove too much uh, dentin. And, um, and some people are very, very, very brave. And um, personally me, you know, I, I, I don't like to cut too much of a, 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 a deep uh, a channel here because I'm worried about um, excess dentin removal. Um, because that obviously weakens the tooth, but I'm also worried about perforating the tooth. So I'm quite happy here that I've got down to about seven millimeters. Um, but don't forget, the crown is not present. So if you were using it with the crown, then the, 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 the sort of the, the post length will be, you know, 17 millimeters. And then we're just going to assess the post here. I've got a, 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 a fiber post here, quite long, and I'm just fitting its length. And when it goes up to the GP, it's sticking out quite a little bit. So what I, what I want to do is I'm just going to get a fast hand piece and I'm just going to just remove the end off. So I know that the post is going to, um, it's going to fit to length and it's only going to stick out uh, uh, the end. And I'm just using the measuring instrument here just to see the depth of the, uh, the where, where the fiber post has got. And I'm just going to chop it off. Um, and then I'm just going to recheck it. And as we put the fiber post to length here, it goes really nicely to length. So, what I am going to do now is I am going to prepare the post space um, and I'm going to use Scotch Bond because a Scotch Bond is a self etching bond. So, if you were to use etch and then bond down here, you'd never get the etch out of the, uh, the post space. So, I'm going to um, use the Scotch Bond and then it pools quite significantly in the base of the post space here. So, I'm going to use some paper points just to wick out. The remaining um, uh, the bond um, and this is easier said than done by the way you want to make sure that you're removing all of the excess bond because it'd be really really difficult then for you to fit the post space to length and then to fit the post uh, we're going to use this Reli X ultimate so this is a dual cure um, uh, composite and I'm just gonna really, really coat this this post. What I don't wanna do is I don't wanna inject this directly into the post space because you'd never get the post in there in a million years because there's no kind of venting for the for the, for the for the sort of looting agent to come out. And then I am gonna fit the post to length and I'm gonna pump it so you get all this kind of dual cure uh, 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 composite into all the little sort of nooks and crannies at where it needs to be. And then I'm going to use the Real IX Universal as the, a core material. So I am going to um, just just build up nicely with this with this uh, with this with this material. 
And then I am going to use just a probe just to sort of manipulate ever so slightly around uh, the tooth because once I've set this, I am then going to, um, uh, I'm going to do a, a crown prep. So you can see here that I'm just manipulating the, 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 the excess uh, composite here just around just to make it easier for me to uh, do a, a crown prep at a later date and then I am going to set it okay some people would set the uh, the 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 fiber post in place before you built up um, the, the 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 core of, of the tooth but in this case I, I was happy just to build it all up and then we just prep the tooth for a crown and um, you know, we we look at the finished article here and it looks really, really nice. Okay, this was a referral, so I suspect that the referring dentist will be super, super happy with this result. It um, it, it stops all mucking around for them. I've I've nominally um, uh, sort of prepped the crown, so I'm really, really happy. And then we look at the X-ray, and you know, it, I, I I'm really happy with this. I suppose if I was if I got my sort of very, very critical hat on. Obviously, we can see there's extrusion of the sealer. Um, it's not ideal, but it's not the end of the world because it's a bioceramic. You know, there's a there's a high chance, but not a, not a hundred percent chance that this will resolve away. Um, you know, if again, if I if I look at the criticisms of this case, there is a slight void in the uh, sort of the coronal portion of this core filling, um, and. I, um, I, I I will speak to the referring dentist and he may or may not want to pull this all out. Um, but overall, it's a super, super result. So if you really, really like this video today, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel. Um, and, and, and with all cases, if you have any criticisms, comments, questions about the case today, if, if you would have done differently, what's really, really important is you comment in the comment section below. We'll have a debate about it. The most important thing about this channel is about education um, and we we, uh, we like to uh, sort of encourage debate because dentistry, you know, you, you, everybody has their own opinion and everyone does their own thing and it's really, really good to get everybody's opinions and things. So really, really great case, really, really happy uh, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.